Hello and welcome back to the Little Scale Cars YouTube channel. Today we have a brand new style of video. I'm going to call it Ranked. Today we are going to rank the 2022 Hot Wheels new models. We're going to go down the main line, all the new castings that we got, and we're going to go from best to worst in my opinion. My opinion is probably going to be drastically different from yours, so go ahead in the comments down below and put your top 10. I want to know what your top 10 new models are. The criteria that I'm using are how hyped I was for the particular release, and then the execution of that model, whether the deco was good, the casting was good, all that kind of factors in. What do I count? I'm counting anything that is not a fantasy casting or like a tuned version of a car. No squished dimensions or anything like that. I am also counting things that were released in the ID line originally, like the Tesla Roadster and the uh, Pininfarina Batista. Um, but I am not counting things like the Corvette C8, where it was released in ID over a year ago now. So, with that, let's go ahead and get this list started. Okay, so, with the list that I put together, I came up with 28 castings that fit my criteria. No fantasy castings and no tuned castings. We are going to start with 28th then, and coming in 28th spot, we have... The 1986 Toyota Van. So, this casting is one that I was not excited for in the slightest. It's uh, a very ugly car in my opinion, not something I was uh, would normally be interested in. And then the execution of it, uh, you know, just not, not for me. Not personally for me. Wouldn't have even picked this one up personally, but um, somebody else needed it, and then they ended up finding it before I could get it to them. So I decided to keep it and use it for TikTok JDM races or something like that. But that being said, it's my least favorite of all the licensed castings for the year, and it takes 28th spot. Coming in at 27th. We have the Tesla Roadster. So my hype was not as high as it could have been for this casting seeing as we did already have a very good version of it from Matchbox. But, you know, I'm still into supercars. This is definitely something I was looking forward to. And the execution of it is horrendous. So it was originally part of the ID line. And for that reason, I guess they thought they'd give it the upsloped chin. And it looks terrible. Uh, it looks like a meme. You know those f f Steven with a PH memes? Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. It looks like a tadpole, you know. That front end is terrible, and the excuse of, oh, it's going to be better on track and stuff like that really doesn't fly for me because we have dozens and dozens of fantasy castings that work immensely great on a track. We don't need to go ruining real car castings, especially another Tesla, uh, because it seems like Tesla always gets that treatment for some reason with Hot Wheels. In 26th, we have the Volvo Drift Wagon. So, I'm not a big fan of wagons, first off, but if this had been completely stock, I probably would have picked it up, because it's an interesting car. However, they decided to make it into a Drift Wagon, which is not my cup of tea. As we can see, it was definitely highly modified. I prefer my cars to be stock. And, I mean, it does look pretty cool. The paint job is definitely not my favorite. I don't love the maroon color and then the windshield is absolutely terrible the windows are pea yellow and they look terrible and uh, all that given then uh, I would not have gotten this one myself it came in my best buy case so I kept it in hopes that I can possibly trade it someday but for now it falls into 26th coming in 25th spot we have the 1988 Ford Thunderbird Pro Street. So, I'm not a huge fan of drag racing, so this is not something I was very excited for. And then the actual edu uh, execution of it um, isn't terrible. I don't like the pink, but I believe this is replicating a specific car. I think the card actually has like the people 
who are behind this specifically mentioned. But um, just overall, not for me. And not anything I was excited for. The execution is decent, but when the hype is that low, I cannot put it any higher than 25th. Alright, I hope you guys put your top 10s into the comments down below because I'm probably going to put a car in 24th that you guys have in your top 10, and that is the custom Honda Civic. So I'm not huge into drag racing, as I've mentioned, and I've also mentioned that I prefer my cars to be stock. So, this is a double whammy of what I don't like. Not anything I'm particularly excited for. Um, the execution of this one is decent if you're if this is what you're into and obviously a lot of people are into it because this was a fairly tough casting to find both color versions of it uh, I only have the blue one I never picked up the red one and uh, I will definitely be using this one for TikTok races and stuff like that in the future but um, there was no hype for me it's not really my style of car therefore it goes into 24th coming in 23rd we have the Nissan Maxima Drift Car. So, kind of the same deal with the Volvo 240. Had this been just a stock Nissan Maxima, I probably would have picked it up and enjoyed it. But um, this being highly modified, highly customized, not exactly stock, it definitely it is not my cup of tea. That being said, though, the actual, actual edge... Uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. The actual execution of it is pretty good. Like, those new wheels are cool. The uh, deco itself is pretty nice. But overall, just not anything I was excited for. Not my style of car. Nothing I was looking forward to. So I have to put it in 23rd. Coming in 22nd is another one from my Best Buy case that I never opened because it's not for me. We have the 62 Corvette Gasser. So I'm actually a big fan of Corvette, especially these kind of original few years of it. I think this was uh, about six years into the Corvette's lifetime, right? Anyway, though, not a big fan of drag racing, as I've mentioned, and definitely not a big fan of gassers. So this one, definitely not my cup of tea. That being said, though, as far as the gasser castings that the Hot Wheels have done, this one is more unique. I do like it more than, like, the, the Bel Air gasser and other ones like that this the nova or whatever came out a few years ago and then the actual deco is actually pretty cool i i don't hate it it's kind of unique but overall not anything i was excited for would never have picked it up myself again came in my best buy case and i'm hoping to trade it someday and uh it will take home 20 second spot all right everything from here on out is something I liked enough to actually add to my collection. So, with that, let's go ahead and start in 21st. We have the 1970 Pontiac Firebird. So I always buy the Legends Tour winner. I always keep it carded. So this one is not staying carded because I'm hoping to trade it. It's staying carded because I keep my Legends Tour winners carded. That being said, getting into things, why is it so low down the list? Well, very similar reasons. It's uh, not stock or anything like that. Now, technically, this is based off of a real-life car. So, that being said, though, it is essentially just a modified Firebird. It's not quite as unique as some of the other Legends Tour winners, like the 2 Jet Z and such like that. And, uh, yeah, just not my kind of cup of tea. It did come out nice, though. There's got a lot of detailing and everything like that. So it's pretty cool. Not my favorite, but uh, it will find itself in 21st spot. Alright, time to crack the top 20. And we're going to get that started with the Liberty Walk Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. So technically, this one is not a new casting, apparently. It's not listed on the new castings wiki. And it's also, the card art did not say new for 2022. I'm assuming that's because they probably just retooled the stock uh, 2000 GTR casting. And so that makes it, uh, on a technicality, not a new model. But uh, in reality, it's a new model, so that's what I counted it as. And as far as the Liberty Walk castings go, they're never my favorite. But this one in particular is a little bit bland. I think perhaps we could have gotten some different Liberty Walk body kits on different cars that uh, more unique kind of wild 
would have been a little bit more fun. That being said though, I did add this one to my collection. It's a little bit bland in some spots, but overall I do like it. I will buy another color of it, but I didn't like it enough to give it any higher than 20th. Coming in 19th, we have the Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400. So, you know, we got to use Mustang lightly there because this is obviously an SUV. But that is the name that Ford gave it, so that is what we have to call it. Uh, I actually really like this casting. Uh, it's really cool. The execution was pretty nice. The deco is not bad. Um, I wish we could have gotten some headlights up front, especially since we did get a little bit of detailing up front. It just seems like they kind of half-assed it there. But uh, overall... It wasn't something I was really, really looking forward to, like losing my mind hoping to find. Um, but as far as getting a Mach-E, a Mustang Mach-E, I think this is definitely the way Hot Wheels should have gone. Uh, Matchbox went with the standard Mach-E route, and while that's fine and that fits more with the Matchbox brand, I'm really glad that Hot Wheels decided to go with the drift race car kind of vibe here. For 18th spot, we have the 95 Jeep Cherokee. So this is one that I was not intending to pick up because it's not my style of car and not something I was really interested in grabbing. But the execution of this one, whoo, it was enough to make me grab it. So we got lights of detailing, like just some extra tampo works and everything that makes it just look like an off-road go out for the weekend and go mudding or rock climbing or something like that go trail riding and it looks awesome. Mine actually, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, has a lot of scuffing here on the windshield or on the window pieces which kind of makes it look like it fell down a, a rock slide or something like that, a cliff side. I think it's cool. The execution put this one over the top for me, high enough to go all the way to 18th. I like the green one over the red one, but the red one is still cool. 17th spot is going to go to the GMC Hummer EV. So, this one was one that I was actually pretty excited for because I like Hummers. I loved Hummers when I was a kid, and uh, while I would never own one myself, uh, they just have some kind of nostalgia factor for me, and especially in this yellow color, I think it looks great. I wish they had given it hardtop uh, and not the kind of see-through windshield piece there that doesn't look amazing on the roof there, but overall, I still really like it, and uh, it just... It's a nostalgia thing, it's a new Hummer, it's a truck, it looks cool. I really liked it, the hype was actually pretty high for me there. And then the execution um, isn't perfect, but it, it's, it does well enough for me. I do prefer this casting over the Matchbox version, although the Matchbox version isn't bad either. But I don't love it enough to give it more than 17th spot. Coming in for 16th spot we have the Ford Sierra Cosworth. So this is one that I was actually really excited for. On a 9 out of 10, my hype was probably at like a 7.5 for this one. Or, scale of 1 to 10, my hype was probably at a 7.5. And, and that being said, the actual ex execution of it just didn't wow me. The Deco was trying to pay homage to a pretty uh, iconic livery, and I just think they missed it a little bit. It doesn't Wow me, it's got a little bit too ec too much extra sauce going on, a little bit too wild, the Hot Wheels up front here. We got two colors of it, and this is by far the better version. The uh, blue and orange version is, yeah, just a little bit more wild. I do like that we got the plastic headlights, that looks good. Tail lights, we didn't get anything back there, but overall, the hype was there, the execution kind of fell flat, and for that reason, it's going to get 16th. Coming in 15th, we have the Toyota Tacoma. I went with the blue version because I prefer it over the red one. The red one was nice as well, though. The hype for this was actually pretty high for me because I like mid-sized trucks. The Chevy Colorado uh, Z71 is probably my favorite of the mid-sized trucks, but uh, the Tacoma is definitely a second. I think I would really love it if we got it in that like TRD orange or whatever it is. Uh, that would make my day with this casting, but this blue is definitely a second choice for me. It, it's fantastic looking. So, as far as mid-sized trucks go, the hype was there, and then the execution came out amazing. We got the headlights, we got all this front detailing, we got these little silver reflector bit thingies. 
on the back we got our 4x4, we got taillights, we got Tacoma, and we got just nice and plain looking on the side. Exactly what I want when I get a Hot Wheels truck. Like, give it a little bit of a raise, lift kit kind of look. It just looks fantastic while still looking stock. And as far as the off-roaders go, definitely my favorite for the year. Coming in 14th is another one I was really excited for. The Aston Martin Vantage GTE. So this is one that I thought would probably crack my top five for the year. And then the execution just fell so flat. This deco choice was terrible. Why would you go with a show car deco on your race car? I get that this is an actual livery that this actual car sported, but it never raced with this, and this is a race car. It needs its racing liveries. And I know we are getting a golf version, which looks night and day better. If that had been the version that we got initially, it probably would have cracked my top five. It definitely would have been in the top ten. But with this terrible deco, uh, it's going to find its way into 14th, even though the casting itself I do quite like. Coming home in 13th, we have the Lucid Air. Uh, we got a white and a silver one. I like them pretty much the same, I just went with the silver one. Um, this is a casting actually roasted pretty hard when it was first announced because at the time there still had not been announcements of some other um, supercars that are uh, all EV that I felt were much more deserving of Hot Wheels castings. But uh, eventually we got those cars in this year too, and we'll see them on this list eventually. Uh, so with that, I kind of grew to accept the Lucid Air a little bit more. And overall, I still really like it. I think it looks good. I like the wheel choice for it. You know, it's still kind of a bland car. Uh, it's a bit like a Tesla Model S. Like, it has the, the DNA to be cool. It just doesn't quite have the styling. But the, the Hot Wheels actually executed it pretty nicely, and uh, nicely enough that I felt like a 13th is a pretty good spot for it. 12th place is going to go to the Lamborghini Cyan FKP37. So this is one that I, again, thought would probably crack the top 10, but the actual casting just kind of left me underwhelmed. So I did a diecast duel with this one, where I talked about how skinny it is, and just how, from certain angles, the proportions just look off. And, uh, for that reason, I cannot put it any higher, because there's just, quite frankly, better versions of it that I already had. I had Atomica, and, uh, now there's several brands that have this casting, so... It's just not Hot Wheels' best work, and it's a shame, because the designer of this casting... Almost everything else that she's designed, I've loved, and I'm just not quite sure what happened with this one. But uh, I'm glad that they're part of the main line, because that way I can get a bunch of different colors of it. So, you know, I can add quite a few of them to the collection, even though I'm not quite as happy with the casting itself. 11th place, just outside of the top 10, is going to be... The Audi RS e-tron GT, uh, specifically this deco, this dark gray, I think that one looks really good. The red one was nice, but it just kind of clashed, I guess, with the with the deco. There is a blue one coming out in 2023 that I've seen pictures of, and I just, whew, that one's going to take the, the cake as my favorite here. But the hype was actually pretty high for me because I really like this car. I think it's a... A unique thing for Audi to do even though it is basically their version of the Porsche Taycan but the execution of it with typical with Audis from Hot Wheels was great got lots of detailing up front we got plenty of detailing in the back and then just a nice overall really clean look clean sports car look to it it does appear to have a slight uplift in the chin I'm not sure if that's accurate or if they did that to be annoying, but it's not visually distracting. So, good enough for 11th spot. Alright, 10th place, here we come. The top 10 begins now, and we start with the Nissan Z Proto. So we got this in two colors, a white and this nice yellow. Of the two, I prefer this yellow. And, uh... The hype was pretty high for this casting, um, not particularly from me, I'm not a huge JDM guy, but um, 
the execution of it came out really nice. It's just nice and clean. The tail lights in the back, the way that they implemented this and gave it like a two-tone look, great. The back window piece doesn't always sit super flush with the like deck lid here, but it's really not that big of a deal when you're figuring these are the main lines. And then up front we got our Nissan logo, and then we got our headlights. This little piece down here was even painted despite the fact that I think it's a piece of the base. But overall, I was just pleased, really pleased with how this one came out. High enough that I decided that it was worthy of 10th. Coming in 9th we have the McLaren Elva. So as far as McLarens go, this is probably one of my least favorite. Just because this whole, like, I don't know what you would call it, speedster, I guess, look is not really my thing. But at this point, we've got the Aston Martin Speedster, so we might as well get the McLaren Speedster as well with the Elva here. Uh, the blue one, in my opinion, looks significantly better than the other ones. I do have a couple gripes with the Deco itself, so I wish we had not gotten the stripes or these numbers here, and we had gotten kind of a tampoing for the rear detailing instead. I think that would have looked a lot better. I don't quite mind the fact that we didn't get uh, headlights considering that's such a small space anyway and then I think these are supposed to be there's little black dots on the side intake here and on every single version I've seen these miss the the marks by a lot so I'm not positive if they're supposed to be like replicating an intake there or if they're just supposed to be like a black stripe or something so my hype not crazy super high for this one, despite the fact that it is a cool car. Um, and then the actual ex execution, kind of a little bit meh. But overall, I still liked it enough that it gets ninth for me. Coming in eighth is one that absolutely blew me away. It is the Liberty Walk Super Silhouette Nissan Silvia. So, as we've talked about, I'm not a huge body kit fan. And I'm not a huge JDM fan. So why is there a body kitted JDM car in my 8th place? Because this one, for a mainline, came out absolutely fantastic. I mean, look how thick this car is, first off, for a Hot Wheels. It's just absolutely got so much metal in it. It looks great. The deco matches the real-life car really, really well. And when you figure this one dropped back when Hot Wheels were still 94 cents instead of $1.19 at Walmart, like, how could you possibly complain? We got the plastic inserts for the that are a piece of the windshield for the headlights, so we'll never have to worry about this one not coming with headlights. Now, there are better versions of this from, I think, Mini GT and possibly a couple other brands have this one, but for a dollar, like, this one just blew me away. The cast of details, the just execution of it, fantastic. So for something I wasn't super hyped for, the execution was so great that I, it easily earned a top 10 spot. 7th place is going to go to the Porsche 935. So, we got what, 3 versions of this? We got the red edition, we got this black and gold, and then we got the red and yellow. Of the 3, I picked the black and gold I, as my favorite. Kind of gives off that John Player livery kind of vibe. Overall, I think it just looks really stealthy and mean. Kind of fits this casting very nicely, considering it's not the most detailed casting that we've ever gotten. But uh, the black kind of hides the the lack of extra details that we'd probably get from this of this casting from like a Mini GT or something like that. But this car from Porsche is one that I'm actually pretty glad we got because. It has such a different silhouette to a lot of other Porsches. It's immediately identifiable as something a little different, and I just really like it. And then the overall execution came out pretty good, so easily finds itself a 7th place spot, in my opinion. Coming home in 6th place is one that a lot of you probably picked as your number one. It is the Porsche 911 GT3. So for me, why is this one all the way down in 6th? Well, I'm not. I'm just not a big fan of Porsche 911s. Um, so the hype wasn't as crazy high as it was for some of the castings that have yet to be seen. Um, but that being said, the execution for a mainline is amazing. Like this is fantastic. This looks almost as good as like the Mini GT or the Mini Champs version 
uh, from a distance at least, up close, not, obviously not quite. But uh, we got the uh, plastic inserts that are a piece of the windshield for our headlights. We got our Porsche logo up front. The base is kind of integrated to look really nicely there. On the back we got our tail light strip, we got license plates, reflectors. The wing wasn't made too chunky, it looks great, looks proportional. And uh, overall, the blue is obviously my favorite of the two colors that we got, and uh, it finds itself in sixth spot. And with that, it is time for the top five. Fifth place is going to go to the Koenigsegg Gemara. So this is my least favorite Koenigsegg of all time. Uh, it is a Koenigsegg that I don't think looks very good. That being said, it is still a Koenigsegg, so I was still very excited for it. And then it arrived, and the execution of it was really, really nice. Uh, the nice gray color that we got uh, really works well for it, I think. We got the headlights. We got a Koenigsegg logo up front. We got Jamera written on the side here. We got our tail lights, and we got our ghost. The yellow interior works really well because the like show car that's been going around uh, kind of has the yellowed interior. The only gripe I have with it at all is that the windshield is down or the window is down right here on this side, and it is not on that side. And for somebody who likes things to be very symmetrical, yeah, that that kind of irks me a little bit. But overall, this was one I probably would have, I was thinking it was probably going to find its way into maybe the ninth or 10th spot, and then the execution put it all the way into the top five. All right, get your pitchforks out, because the number four is probably going to be something that a lot of you guys picked as number one, and definitely would have had it on your podium. But for me, it's only going to take fourth, and that is the Pagani Zonda R. So... Why is it so low? Because the execution is fantastic and there's absolutely no denying that. It takes fourth because of the hype. The hype just wasn't very high for me because we've been spoiled by Tarmac Works, who's released a, quite a few of these at this point, uh, including two with this kind of livery, uh, one in full carbon fiber that just looks amazing. Um... So with that, the hype just isn't quite there for me on this one. It came 10 years too late. This car should have been done 10 years ago. Maybe even, you know, what, 2009 was when this car came out? Uh, so, shoot, we could have had it 13 years ago, and it would have been over-the-top amazing. But uh, overall, I am glad that we finally did get one, because now we can get it in all kinds of crazy colors that we know Tarmac Works would never give it to us in. We can get it in orange and purple and who knows what else, but uh, I'm really looking forward to future versions of it. But because of that low hype, it only takes home fourth. Taking the bottom spot of the podium in third place is the one that I am going to struggle the most to pronounce. It is the Pinin Farina Batista. Definitely a brand that I have always struggled to pronounce properly, and I'm sure I'm still not getting it quite right. But uh, this one was originally released er, as an ID car earlier this year, same with the Tesla Roadster, in that infamous, hard-to-find uh, wave of IDs. But luckily this one came to the main line, and we got three versions of it. We got a yellow one, this blue, and the red. And of the three, I think this blue is definitely my favorite. So, the hype when this ID version was released was insane for me. This is a really unique car, something I never thought we would have gotten from Hot Wheels. Um, and then the execution came out fantastic. We got our headlights, even the little strip. We've got our taillights, we've got a license plate and everything. The wheels look cool on it. The proportions are nice, perhaps a touch heavy up front. But overall, it just looks great. This is one that when I first got it, every time I'd look at it, I'd find something new I liked about it. We even have kind of a carbon fiber look going on on the roof somehow. I'm not even sure how they did that. But this is one that the hype was there, the execution followed it up, and I was extremely happy for it. Easily taken home third. Alright, taking home second 
If you're following along, you'll know there's two missing, and they should be no surprise, because you know I'm a massive fan of this company. We have the Lotus Avaya. So, how does the car I have been begging everyone who makes 164th scale to make, how does that find its way into second place? Well, these Venturi tunnels and the two-tone kind of colors that they gave it, I don't love. So the, the hype was 10 out of 10. I couldn't possibly have been more excited for this. As you have been, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know I was begging for this car from anyone who would give it to us. And then we finally got it, and while I still love it, I think it came out really, really nice. I don't love the two kind, the two tone colored thing, even though that is something that you can get in real life with it. I just don't think it was probably the best way of approaching this car. And then the other thing, as if you watched my review of this, you'll know is I don't think they should have made the wing up because you rarely see the Avaya with its wing up. And uh, yeah, I just I think it would have looked better with it down. But that being said, the hype was so unreal, and the execution. While I sound like I'm bashing on it a lot, I still really, really like it. I'm just a little bit more critical because I was so excited for this one. But that being said, though, this one still easily takes number two spot for me. So that leaves us with just one more left. And it is, of course, the Lotus Amira. So if you watched my review of this one, you will see my full thoughts on it. But... The only gripe I have with it at all is the chrome wheels, which I blacked out on the one I keep on display in my collection. And uh, the hype for this one was just as high as the Avaya for me, because I'm a big Lotus fanboy, right? So, obviously, extremely excited for this one, and when we found out it was coming, I almost didn't even sleep that night, I was so excited. Uh, the execution of it came out really nice, too. The proportions looked good. Uh, the tampo work came out great. The only, like I said, the only gripe I have is maybe the wheels could have been blacked out like they were on the Avaya. I, I just, I'm almost speechless with how shocked I am that we even got this because modern Lotuses have just been neglected as far as the Mattel brands go. And to have gotten two new castings this year and uh, both of them being modern was amazing for me. And uh, their hype couldn't have been any better. The execution of this one really blew me away for a main line. And with that being said, that was why the Lotus Amira takes my number one spot. Alrighty guys, that's all I have for you this time around. Hopefully your top tens are already in the comments below. But let me know what your thoughts are on my own top ten as well. And make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next video.